because this is the last like Fox X-Men um, since they've now, Disney and Fox have now merged. I really believe they are going out with a bang on this one. Subscribe! What's up, you two? Man, you all picked a awesome time to spend some downtime with the meal. I hope you all are having a fantastic Friday morning. As you see this, I've recorded this Thursday night, but it is Friday morning by the time you are seeing this or anytime after Friday, depending on when you watch it. Anyway, last night I had an opportunity to see X-Men Dark Phoenix, which I'm getting ready to talk about right now. And I'm just gonna give you my thoughts on this movie. This is going to be a spoiler-free review that you're gonna see. All I'm gonna do is just basically give you my thoughts on how I felt while watching the movie. And you can just tell me what you think about it. You know, hopefully you all will get a chance to see the movie and, and come to your own conclusions. But this is just my opinion about the movie. So here we go, check it out. So the basic plot of this movie revolves around a problem that happened in space with these astronauts that were on this mission. The X-Men are called in to help and rescue these astronauts from space. And while in space, Jean Grey becomes infected with uh, something with the Phoenix. And so from that point forward, she's going back and forth wrestling with how to deal with this new power that she has. It's really like a big problem because it's like controlling her and she doesn't know how to control it. And so that's basically the biggest thing what this movie is about, how she handles this power that she came in contact with in space. And from that point, that's where things really start to unfold with uh, Jean Grey and the character that she plays as well as the other X-Men. I'm gonna be honest with you as far as how I feel about this movie. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that have slammed this movie, that hate the movie, you know, and they have their reasons for feeling that way. I will say this, this is probably not my favorite X-Men movie. It's not the worst one that I've seen. But what I can say is that I think part of it has to do with coming fresh off of Avengers Endgame and just seeing how over 10 years, how characters from that universe were built up and how, you know, over time we got so close to these characters. It's like we got really, really attached to them. Bars were set in that movie when it comes to villain and characters and things like that and honestly with this particular movie i really just felt like i came away empty there's not a real connection when they try to make big things happen in this movie like kind of like what you would see in endgame when they would make big things happen there it's like you kind of get the idea that they're wanting to do similar things in this movie big moments but because there's no real connection with some of these characters, like what you have in the MCU, I don't know, for me, this is just my opinion, I felt like it just came away a little empty. When the movie is over, it's like, okay, movie's over, time to get up, time to go home, safe drive home, and that was it. And I didn't really feel anything. And I don't know, I feel like as though there should have been more time spent with developing the characters in this movie. Maybe even the length of the movie could have been longer because this movie is under two hours long. Maybe even the villain, you know, giving more purpose to why this villain feels, you know, the way that they do. You just have a villain that has one goal and that's all you really know. There's no reason, there's no purpose. And that's part of the reason why I believe that characters like villains, for example, like Thanos, the bar was set really, really high. And it's unfortunate, but you do have to make comparisons now. Whenever there's a villain that comes out, you have to compare them to other villains. How did this villain stack up with this villain? 
from this movie. And to be honest, this char- this villain, uh, played by Jessica Ch- Chastain's character, the villain was not that memorable. I mean, she really wasn't. And I will say that I thought that the acting was really good as far as Michael Fassbender playing Magneto, as far as Jennifer Lawrence playing Mystique, as far as James McAvoy playing, of course, Charles Xavier, of course, Sophie Martin playing Phoenix. They all did a good job acting, but it almost seems as though there was just some things that were missing from the script that was really, should have been able to really help these characters out a lot and really just make us want to fall in love with them even more. I just didn't get that feeling while watching this movie. As far as the visual effects and the CG in this movie, I felt that there were times where the CG and the visual effects were really, really good, but then there were times when I felt like the CG and the visual effects were just average. It wasn't anything groundbreaking that we hadn't already seen. Now that, you know, the last X-Men movie that Fox is producing, now that, you know, they're under the Disney umbrella. And I just felt like there should have been more of a dramatic finish. And I don't know, this is just my opinion. I didn't think that it was that big of a dramatic finish. Don't get me wrong. There are some points in the movie, like I said previously, where the CG is good and the visual effects are good. But then there's times where it's just average and I don't really see it being anything groundbreaking that we hadn't already seen before. And honestly, that was a little disappointing for me. In all fairness, you really can't compare a movie like this to Avengers Endgame because that's really like on a whole nother level. You have to compare a movie like this to other X-Men movies. As far as other X-Men movies go, I would I would definitely say that in my own personal opinion, I thought that X-Men Days of Future Past is a better movie than this. Um, I really thought so. Even X-Men First Class. I think those, in my opinion, are better movies. Maybe it's because some of the characters that were in the movie are more memorable characters like Wolverine, perhaps. Maybe that's part of the reason. Or maybe it's Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War hadn't happened at that time. And maybe maybe what we're experiencing with this, with this movie is that the bar has been set so high by other movies that maybe the expectation, even though it's a completely different franchise, maybe the expectation for movies that we watch has been raised. And let's be honest, now that the characters are gonna be recast, most likely Disney is taking this thing over, we will see a different uh, X-Men in years to come and it will be likely be a better product than this. So this is not a bad movie, but it's not the best. It's, and really where I am right now is somewhere in the middle. And for that, I give this movie a solid C. I'm not gonna go crazy and give this movie an F like some people have. I think it's an okay movie. I think it could have been better, but I also think a large part of that is because of where the bar is with superhero movies today. And so for that, I give this movie a C. So that is my official review of X-Men Dark Phoenix. Have you all seen this movie? Will you be seeing it this weekend? If so, if you have seen the movie, post your thoughts down in the comments below about what you think about this movie. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for offering your support on this channel. Don't forget, on the way out, hit like and subscribe. And if you like this video, tell your friends about Downtime with DeMille. Have an awesome weekend. Enjoy yourself this weekend. If you can see this video, you are blessed. And as always, what are you gonna do in your downtime? Peace.